black and white tolerates no distractions. It demands truth and authenticity, and it's painful sometimes. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Photography Radio. My name is Tomasz, and today you are listening to The Woo with Karen Hatton, where she muses up a tasty blend of inspiration, photography, and life. Enjoy. Can you imagine your life without photography? No? Then you will love this show. And it doesn't matter if you're a DSLR, a mirrorless, or a mobile phone shooter. We're here to help your photography grow. This is Photography Radio. Hey, hey, welcome back to The Woo. I'm Karen Hutton. So today I want to talk about black and white, black and white photography, but I'm going to get a little woo about it. Big surprise there, right? <laughs> First of all, there's this about me. Photography is in my blood as is black and white. I discovered after my mother died, my the Norwegian side of my family came to this country on a steamer, apparently. I believe it was in the maybe the early 1900s, maybe the 1910s, maybe the 20s. They came over on a steamer. They were dressed in period costume, only it wasn't costume because it was them. And they took pictures of each other on the steamer, cavorting on the deck and posing on the chaise lounges and this whole thing. They were having a good old time. And I looked at these photos that were at the bottom of a stack of stuff in a trunk. They look like they'd been printed yesterday. It was amazing. I said, man, I had no chance. I was going to be a photographer and that's all there was to it. Because <laughs> my mother took pictures of us growing up every stage of the way we have if we put them all together it would be like a time lapse film practically and at least a good half of them you know from the time i was quite young until color wow this is dating myself best time i ever had <laughs> yeah a lot of my early life is black and white because that's all we had at the time so black and white is just a part of how i see the world and the structure and the form and the beauty of the world through shades and tones and textures. So when I got to the age where it was like, decide what you're going to do and let's go to college, I was like, well, I don't know if I want to go to a big college. So I went to our local junior college that had a tremendous photography department and I signed up because I wanted to be a professional photographer. So let's go. I was so excited. And I dug in. I mean, black and white was the basics. That's where they started us. It was raw and unapologetic. It was all boiled down to structure, form, light and shadows, tones, texture, shape and design. Heck, extra points for good use of shadows that trigger imaginations to wonder what exactly is lurking in them. God, it was like the land of unbridled dreams. And the penumbras, oh, that delicious in-between space that was not quite light, not quite shadow, but the space where both reside in varying measure. I got curious about the word penumbra, so I looked it up. It's from the Latin meaning almost or nearly. And then you go back to penumbra and what it looks like in a photo, and you wonder, well, which is it? Almost dark or nearly light? That's the cool thing about penumbras. They play with your mind that way, and they push for a decision on the matter before you press the shutter. And what will you and won't you include in the frame that will tell the tale just the way you see it and feel it? No color to help you out. It's all just you and what you see. Black and white, it glares at you until you make strong choices. It embraces the dichotomy of contrasts like an insatiable lover and nearly forces you to focus, to storytell, but not just tell any story, tell your story without distractions. No, no, black and white tolerates no distractions. It demands truth and authenticity, and it's painful sometimes. What do you feel? Really, what makes your skin tingle? Not just up here, down there. Down where your life isn't so Barnum and Bailey, it's just life, raw, unapologetic, where the shapes and forms that make up your life can be seen and the lines drawn. Decisions are made, nothing is left to chance. It is a huge limitation. It's the one that gets you out of yourself to see things differently. 
That's one of the gifts of black and white, monochrome, light and shadow. In the cities, it's about humans and how light bounces off the souls of the many who live there. It's about the patterns they make and the marks they leave, the structures they create and how light dances amongst them. It's about the roads they cross, the exultations they experience, and the miseries they endure, and the movements that indicate there is still life in this jungle. In nature? Oh, yeah, black and white in nature? There, it's all about the creations that our Mother of Earth thought would be beautiful to make, and the shapes and designs that she made them with, that our Father breathed life into, and it was good. The patterns they make together and the marks they leave. The lessons they have for us about how life is meant to be. The shadows they cast upon the land but upon time. And those penumbras, oh, always those penumbras, asking us to decide if the glass is half full or half empty. To choose life or death. But choose. In monochrome, relationships play out. Relationships with space, with the environment, with each other. Reflections, revealing worlds within worlds and how they relate to each other. How they play with each other. How they depend upon each other. Interplays and inner workings made visible in ways that are lost when they're drenched with color. Beyond the bounds of a color wheel reality, we breathe and relax into something more peaceful, revealing, and basic. Oh. That's what you mean. I see. It's about time and timelessness. Where why finds its answers, because the question is clearer. Black and white woos and seduces. It beckons and dares with more shades and textures and tones than you dreamed possible. It boils everything down. It asks you. It demands that you choose. And a new epic tale is born. It's simpler. It's stripped down. It's unplugged. It's raw. It's unapologetic. And it is more beautiful than you can imagine. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hit subscribe on your podcast app. It would mean a lot for us to have you as our regular listener. Head over to photographyradio.com to drop your suggestion for future editions of Photography Radio or simply to say hello. We would absolutely love to hear from you. In the meantime, have a wonderful light and we will be back with more photography in your ears very soon. <laughs>